Hi, let's make some brake pipes. But because it's a job we only do occasionally on cars, it's easy to forget the best way of making them and to remember all the hints and tips from various people. So what I've done here is to go through everybody's um, videos on YouTube, picking up their experience, and I think I've summarized it down into about 16 uh, tips or stages uh, to go through. So to save it looking at all those other videos, we'll go through them now. First point, practice on a bit of spare pipe first. Use a, a plumber's pipe cutter like this one to cut the length you require. This is how we cut the pipe. Twisting the knob a bit tighter as we go. And eventually the blade will have cut into the pipe deep enough so there's will either drop off or you can give it a quick wiggle and it'll end snapping too. The advantage, of, uh, the advantage of a pipe cutting tool is that it keeps the pipe nice and circular, doesn't flatten one side, makes it very symmetrical all the way around. Uh, you can measure the length that you require. The best way of doing that is with a bit of plastic tubing, like so because this bends with the same sort of angle, same sort of bendiness as uh, you want on your brake pipe. So for instance, we can put our plastic tube, bend it round like where the new brake pipe is going to go and it gives us a good estimate of the length. Next step, flatten the end with a file. Uh, you could clamp it in your flaring tool, just have it so it's a little bit poking at the top. Now some, I've seen some people suggest turning the tool upside down so you've got the flat surface uh, to file against. I think it makes a huge amount of difference personally. Just keep the file straight and file the top till it's nice and flat. Helps to keep it symmetric by doing it from different sides. And as you can see nice and flat, you want it to be flat so that when you squash down the pipe as part of the flaring process that it gives a nice symmetrical bubble. Okay, that's the end flattened. Point number five, use a knife to not only remove the burr from the inside but also create a slight chamfering a slight 45 degree slant to the inside top edge. Uh, what that does is prevents your pipe or tries to minimize the pipe clamping onto your die and making it difficult for the die to remove from the end of the pipe and uh, also helps it fit on the die a little bit in case there's a little bit of chamfering on the end of the die and then Point number six, chamfer the outside edge with a file. Rotate it as you do this. Again, that's part of the deburring, but also encourages the end of the pipe to bend inwards rather than outwards when you're squashing it with the die. There we go. Point number seven, if this is your last joint, You've already got one done at the other end. Don't forget to fit your pipe fittings now because once you've flared it, you won't be able to get them on. And by pipe fittings, I mean the male fittings, like so, normally. Point number eight use a quality flaring tool. Uh, I've had some cheaper ones, and you tend to find that the metal on the cone is too soft because it's cheap and it can get damaged and not perform very well. And the die pieces talking about die pieces can also break and not perform very well. Point number nine, clamp the tool in a vise on a bench. Point number 10, set the pipe in the tool. So this is 3 16th pipe. And we want to set the pipe in the tool so the pipe protrudes up to the first edge on the die. And by that, what we mean is like so, with the pipe sticking up, until it's level with that first edge on the die you're going to use for that size pipe. Then you want to tighten up the tool 
so that the tool clamps the pipe. Now I've seen plenty of videos and people that clamp this all the way up till the two halves of the tool actually meet. It does have the advantage you don't get any step in the flare in the little gap. But I did find on this particular tool they can actually squash the pipe too much. So as long as it's gripping the pipe enough, that is sufficient and you'll get a uh, better pipe end. Make sure the two halves of the tool are completely flat and give it a little tighten with a screwdriver or you could use the file just to tighten that without squashing the pipe too much and having it evenly clamped. Tip number 11. Lubricate the die with some brake fluid and the end of the pipe, top of the die and the part of the die that actually goes into the pipe. This makes it easier for the pipe to uh, slide and bend over the die and easier to remove the die from the pipe. Plus allows your flaring tool to last a bit longer. I've seen some people talk about using oils and greases but especially oil uh, does not mix with brake fluid. I'm um, not sure about grease either, but to play safe, why not use brake fluid? Number 12, insert the top part of the tool onto the bottom part, like so, and let's just tighten that up a little bit. What's best now is to give it a little twist so that you can actually force the top part or hold the top part against the bottom part. Tops at a slight angle. Uh, and allows you to grab onto the tool a little bit better so that it's vertically perfectly straight. Now you need to look at the alignment of the tool over the pipe to make sure it's perfectly centralized because that is very important for getting a symmetric uh, squash to the end of the pipe. Then tighten up the tool so the die squashes the end of the pipe down, keep going until the die touches the bottom part of the tool. And your pipe is squashed sufficiently. 13. Remove the top part of the tool. And now we've got to remove the top part of the die. Don't be too harsh here. You might need to get a pair of pliers on it if it's stubborn. They give it a gentle little bit of twisting and wiggling and should then be able to remove it. If it's stubborn, as I say, we'll get some pliers on it. So just a very gentle wiggle, and the die comes off like so, leaving a bubble under the end of the pipe, and it should look something like this. Let's see how good a picture we can get there. Not too bad. So what should happen is the pipe, the top part of the pipe, should have um, flared or bent inwards towards the central spike on the die. On a very worn die, you might find it flaring out somewhat. It's not too much of an issue. Now, there's plenty of pipe ends that just look like that. Uh, probably would be sufficient to hold the pipe while it's fitting. But a proper double flared end is when you take the tool, squash the pipe further. Now we just use the cone part of the top part of the flaring tool to do a little bit of flaring, a little bit of squashing on the end of the pipe, not too much so it's weakened. And if you do it too much it makes the end a little bit too thin and best to do a little bit. Have a look at the pipe, see if you're happy with it. And there is our pipe end. Nicely symmetrically flared pipe not too squashed at the end by the clamping tool uh, enough metal at the end such that that's going to butt up against the uh, end joint that we're going to make uh, we fit in this case a male fitting on it make sure it fits nicely maybe do with a little bit of further flaring out I think so we'll just do that there we go with a fraction bit more flaring sits a little flatter and a little bit straighter so that is the pipe end flared and in this case we've got to do the other end as well 
and in most cases you want to bend the pipe to fit in a fitting you can do it with your fingers the safest way of doing pipe bending is with a pipe bending tool like this one here it stops it uh, squashing too much and makes pipe bending easy okay that's making our brake pipes good luck with yours uh, practice and patience and perseverance and you will end up with some good brake pipes hopefully the why I counted our 16 tips are in the video description, so check those out for yourself. I'll put a few links in the video description also of where to buy all the various tools, pipes, fittings, pipe benders and so on, if you haven't got any of the stuff yourself already. And good luck with yours. Thanks for watching. Bye.